Sound right. Yeah, where did it go? There's only one way to find out. Come on. <gasps> wow! Would you look at that? Oh. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> This place isn't very big at all. <laughs> Me like. It's our special little hidden place. I've never seen this kind of tree. Hmm, <laughs> smells good. Ew! You leaf eaters sure have a strange sense of smell. I think the tree sweets smell yummy. I think they do, too. I do, I do! Your sniffers must be broken. It smells so bad it makes my head hurt. Ugh, I'm gonna go. <gasps> Wait for me, Chomper! I can't keep an eye on you if I can't see you. We'll meet up with you after we're through exploring. Hmm. <laughs> hey, look! Spike thinks the tree sweets taste as good as it smells. Mm -hmm. This is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'll have another. Then another! And 
another. Good times, good friends. Take a look at what we found. Good times, good friends. Lots of tree sweets all around. <laughs> Secret, but there aren't enough tree sweets here for everyone, so what's the use in telling them? Hmm, I guess you have a point. Of course I do. No need to make a big deal about a few hidden tree sweet trees. Oh, I eat it too much. <laughs> Ducky, Spike, I was getting worried. Where have you been? We were playing toss the seed. Then you must be very hungry. I gathered these especially for you. <laughs> oh, my favorite. we come back, the better these tree sweets taste. I'm glad you ate so much. It doesn't smell so bad anymore. <sniffs> Ugh, still doesn't smell good, though. Then we'll just have to keep eating. Right, Spike? Are you two feeling all right? You haven't been eating much lately. We have not been hungry. You and Spike? Not hungry? <laughs> uh, yes. All of the stop the seat playing makes us less hungry. <sighs> Mama? There's something Spike and I should... Oh, no! It can't be! Not here! Happy oh, oh, Riders! Happy Riders! They're here! Oh. Oh. Fast Fighters in the Great Valley? and the young ones to safety. The rest of you, fall in behind me and Grandpa Longneck. <sighs> Time to show some fast biters that they're not welcome here. 
<laughs> hey, you! Fast biters! You all know what to do. Hungry and sorry tonight. Those sneaky fast biters got clean away. Oh, we've searched everywhere. They must have found a way into the valley we don't know about. It's been a long time since any sharp teeth got into the Great Valley. This is a very dangerous development. We've seen those fast biters with Red Claw. <laughs> and Red Claw is the biggest and meanest sharp tooth of them all. So if they're here, he's not far behind. <laughs> then we need to find out how the fast biters are getting in and out. Until we know, we'll have to keep an eye out day and night. <laughs> Spike, do you want this? Hmm? I I'm not hungry. What, Spike? What, what, what? <laughs> it's another passageway. But where does this one lead? Oh, no. oh, no. There's a second way out of our hidden place, and it goes to the mysterious beyond. Uh-oh. And that's not all. Fast Spider Prince. If the Fast Spiders got in here, then they could find their way into the Great Valley. That's how they got in last night. Oh, we leave now. Me scared. What we do now? We know how the fast spiders got into the valley. We have to warn everyone. But what if they get mad at us? I guess that's a risk we'll just have to take. <sighs> we made a big mistake. It is more than an oops. We've got to go, tell everyone what we found here. Even though they will be mad at us. How were we to know? Sharp teeth could get in. It's too late now. We don't have time to argue. We must let the others know what we know. say you made a mistake. No one is supposed to eat the tree sweets in the hidden canyon. You say you saw footprints. Yeah. Fast spider footprints. Children, how much of the tree sweets did you eat? Uh, a lot. What's that got to do with anything? Those tree sweets have a smell that sharp teeth don't like. In fact, it makes them sick. I believe that. But if there aren't many tree sweets left, the smell won't stop Sharp Teeth from coming into the Great Valley. What? Oh, no! Grandma, you warn the others. Mr. Threehorn and I will check on the Hidden Canyon. 
At least now we know how the sharp teeth got in. Well, there are still some tree sweets up here. Well, you can hardly smell them. No wonder it didn't keep the sharp teeth away. <sighs> we'll just have to find another way to keep the sharp teeth out. That screech is screech! The fast fighters are back! There's no time to get away. <laughs> Littlefoot, you and your friends go back and get help. Mr. Threehorn and I will make sure you get away. Yes, we can stop the sharp teeth, at least for a while. Now go. Stand the tree sweets. Peace. 
Yes, Littlefoot. We have to make sure there's no way for Sharp Teeth to get into the valley. We can never, ever go back to our special hidden place. No, no, no. Now that the hidden canyon has been closed off, the Great Valley is once again safe from sharp teeth. My friends and I want to apologize for putting everyone in danger. We didn't tell everyone about the tree sweets we found. We so, so sorry. Well, you should be sorry. I'm getting too old to tangle with sharp teeth. But, Daddy, you are so brave the way you fought Red Claw. Oh. 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 oh, well, it was nothing really. <laughs> there I was, face to face with Red Claw. Oh. Now, the trick to fighting sharp teeth is not to let them think you're afraid. So I, I marched right up to that big bully and I looked him right in the eye. He knew who was boss. And that's why tree stars change color before the cold times. Wow, that was a great one, Grandpa. Yes, tell us another story so we can listen to it. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, I know. Once many cold times ago, there was a young longneck named Star Watcher. Every night, he climbed to the top of a hill to look at the sky stars. But one night, the sky stars decided to come down out of the sky. They wanted to take a look at the long neck who was always looking at them. The Sky Stars said hello to Star Watcher and asked if he would like to visit them up in the sky. Are you sure that's how it happened? Huh? I'm not so sure you're telling that story right. All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come follow me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow on our way home. To the land before time. I think you must be forgetting the stories in your old age. Sorrow, is that you? It's me, all right. I thought I'd never find you. I can't believe it. After all this time, I'd given up hope. I never gave up. Like green food in cold times, it, it may, may shrink away, away but, but it, it will, will always grow back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa? Who is this? 
Children, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. His name is Sorrow. It's a pleasure to meet you all. But who's this? A sharp tooth? <laughs> <laughs> That's Chomper. He was hatched by Littlefoot. And now he's living with us. Yeah. I want to learn how different dinosaurs can all get along. Well, you couldn't have found a better teacher. It was good to hear you tell one of the long neck stories again. Grandpa's great at telling stories. Oh, I know. Your grandpa was a great story speaker. Story speaker? What's that? A story speaker would travel the land, telling the great long neck stories to all the long neck herds. And you were a story speaker, Grandpa? Your grandpa was one of the finest story speakers ever. I tried to learn every story I could from him. Oh, well, I, I just wanted everyone to remember our important past. <laughs> Me like stories. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa, Sorrow, could you tell us one of the great long neck stories? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we might be able to remember a story or two. Now, who knows how long necks got their name? Oh, it is because they have long necks. Yep, yep, yep. Everyone knows that. But did you know that long necks didn't always have long necks? They didn't? Many cold times ago, before you or I had hatched, Long necks had short necks. Back then, the trees were very short, so they could eat tree stars from the top of the trees. The trees would sing to the bright circle every day as it crossed the sky. The bright circle liked their song so much that it reached down and pulled the trees until they were very tall. That way, they would be closer to the sky when they sang their bright circle songs. But now, the tree stars were so high that the short-necked long necks couldn't reach them. That night, the night circle felt sorry for them and reached down to comfort them. The light made them feel better. And so, they lifted their heads up to get closer to the night circle. In doing so, their necks stretched enough to reach the tree stars. The kindness of the night circle helped us become long necks. And that is how long necks got their long necks. That was a very good story. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Looks like talking about tree stars made Spike hungry. <laughs> 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 stories all the time. It is an honor to tell the great long neck stories. And a very important job. But some of the long necks have begun to forget their stories. That's why you have to come back and be a story speaker again. I, what? Oh, I don't think I can. We'll travel the land, telling everyone the great long neck stories, just like we used to. It, it sounds like a nice idea. So, you're going to be the story speaker again, Grandpa? Of course he is! Sorrow, I'm sorry. I know how important the stories are. And I loved being a story speaker, but 
That was long ago. Things are different now. What do you mean, Grandpa? My place is here in the Great Valley, with you and Grandma and all the others. But you're the story speaker. The Longnecks need you. I need you. I can't tell the stories on my own. Sorrow, I am very sorry. But even though my days of wandering have passed... Then you've turned your back on the Longnecks and all of our traditions. Sorrow, wait! I have nothing left to say to you. bad for sorrow. He's hurt and angry, and I don't want him to feel that way. I had hoped he and I would be able to tell the great stories together. Uh, but those days are long gone. Remembering, remembering, is a kind of a funny thing. It makes me think of time gone by. Friends are made by saying hi. Thoughts I'll always hold dear. Remembering makes reappear. But even when the thoughts are sad, I'll always have remembering. Sorrow would someday become a story speaker. He knows the stories as well as I ever did. Why didn't you tell him? Well, I never had the chance. And now Sorrow's too angry to listen to me. Well, it's sad, really. I've already begun to forget some of the long neck stories. I can't let the long neck stories be lost. I've got to find Sorrow. Sorrow's footprints lead out into the mysterious beyond. Who? Who is it? <gasps> Come on out. I I'm not scared of you. Why would you be scared of me? Oh, Chomper. I, I was just... What are you doing? I'm following you. What are you doing? I'm following Sorrow's footprints. I have to bring him back. Grandpa wants him to be the new story speaker. Wow! Then you're gonna need my sniffer so you can find him fast. I got him! Then let's go. To the fast water. Wow, that looks big. Maybe to us, but Sorrow's a full grown long neck. He could just walk across. Maybe we can walk across too. See, it's not that deep. Whoa! <laughs> I think it might just be a little too deep for me to walk across. Hmm. It might not be too deep for me. See? Can I get a ride? Sure, hop on. Thanks. Not 
just keep going straight. <laughs> A big long neck like Sorrow probably just stepped right over this ledge. Rocks will help us climb over. <laughs> Too bad Sarah's not here. She's really good at pushing things around. <laughs> there. That should do it. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Little foot. We make a pretty good team, Chomper. Yeah, we do. <laughs> now let's go try to catch up with Sorrow. <laughs> His smell is getting stronger. See? There he is! Littlefoot? Chomper? What are you doing following me? We came to ask you to come back to the Great Valley. You need to talk to my grandpa. I don't have anything more to say to him. Why are you so mad at Littlefoot's grandpa? If he doesn't come with me to be the story speaker, all the great stories will be forgotten. Well... Why can't you be the story speaker? Well, because he's the story speaker. I can't do it by myself. I can't. Look! Sliding rocks! Oh, no. followed me. Those rocks are now blocking the way back to the Great Valley. Oh no, we're trapped. What are we gonna do? We will be okay. Maybe we can climb over. There's no way. We might be stuck here forever. Chomper, just take a deep breath. And calm down. I don't think I can. It's dark and it's stuffy. Close your eyes. Think of a sky filled with puffies. Until we can find a way out of here. But what if you can't dig out of these rocks? What will we do to survive?
say, did your grandpa ever tell you the story of Tall Stepper? Tall Stepper? I don't think so. Tall Stepper grew up to be a great long-necked leader. But when he was young, just about your age, he learned a great lesson about being brave. Tall Stepper and his little sister were playing one day and having a great time. They were having so much fun that the wind became very jealous. The wind swirled and blew around Tall Stepper's sister and carried her into the air and up into its wind cave in a tall, tall mountain. Tall Stepper was scared to follow the wind up into its wind cave, but he knew that if he was going to save his sister, that is what he would have to do. When Tall Stepper reached the cave, the wind made a deal with him. If he could beat the wind in a race down the mountain, his sister would be released. Tall Stepper knew it would be dangerous, but he knew he had to do it to save his sister. No one had ever beaten the wind before. But Tall Stepper found the courage he needed to race faster than any long neck before him. Because Tall Stepper found courage when he was afraid, he was able to beat the wind down the mountain. The wind kept his promise and brought Tall Stepper's sister back from the cave. Tall Stepper grew into a great leader. And whenever he needed to be brave, he remembered how he once had the courage to beat the wind. And sometimes, when I need courage, I think of Tall Stepper too. Wow. Thanks for telling us that story, Sorrow. Yeah. I feel better now. Littlefoot! Littlefoot! Grandpa? Littlefoot! Yeah, I hear him too. Grandpa? Grandpa? Littlefoot, me find you. Petrie! What are you doing here? Me find them! Everyone, over here! How did you guys find us? We followed your footprints to follow you up into the canyon. Then we heard it the rock slide. We heard you yelling, too. <laughs> Sorrow, there's something I want to talk to you about. About what I said earlier? I'm sorry about that. No, no, Sorrow. I think you should be the new story speaker. Me? But... <laughs> I can't tell the great stories without you. But Sara, you told us a story. The one about Tall Stepper. We were really scared, but your story helped us feel a lot better. You see, Sara, you saw a chance for one of the great stories to teach something important at a time of need. That's what a good storyteller does. That's what a story speaker does. So, you really think I'm ready to be a story speaker? I know you are. Me too. That's right. Mm -hmm. I just wish I had told you earlier. I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I thought story speakers always had something to say. Maybe you're right. In fact, this reminds me of the story about the very first story speaker. Her name was First Voice. One day, First Voice came upon a great cave. But when she walked into the cave, she began to hear the footsteps of another Why 
Why is Petrie so excited? Do you see where he went? Can someone please tell me where we're going? All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Burning bright with a newborn Come sun. Come follow me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. Circle celebration. <sighs> oh, that. Is it that time again? Best time ever. Must get ready. <gasps> you know, I don't really know if I know about the bright circle celebration. <sighs> you know, no? I'll tell you everything you need to know. Go back to your sleeping spots before Petrie tries to make you work all day. <laughs> Must work. Bright Circle need wonderfulish celebration so it stay all shiny more longer. <sighs> well, Petrie, you can waste your time with the celebration, but I'm going back to my nice warm spot. Oh, Sarah Wright, me need help. Big celebration need big space all clean. Um, is there more to the celebration than clearing the clearing? Oh, yeah. We gather delicious cold time foods for everyone and have big feast. <laughs> it is much work, but it is worth it. Yes, yes, yes. Also, everyone think about what they learned since last cold time. Like me, learn this. <laughs> But we make place ready first. I think I'm going to like this bright circle celebration. <laughs> ready, push! <laughs> Sarah, need help? Oh, all right. Just this one tree. My sleeping spot is getting colder and colder. This makes Bright Circle all happy. Uh, how so? Bright Circle sea celebration. If good, then Bright Circle stay in sky longer and longer until warm times come. The Bright Circle is watching us? Yes, Bright Circle always watching. No, it isn't. So, if the Bright Circle doesn't like the celebration, does that mean the warm times won't come? That's what Petrie thinks, but it isn't true. It's just a story. Right, little foot? Huh? Well, I don't know. I just think it's fun to celebrate something that you're thankful for. Fun for some of you, maybe. To me, it just seems like a lot of work for no reason. Are we done with this tree yet? <laughs> Me no done. Push tree to fast water for bright circle. Okay, let's come do on. it. Yep, yep, yep. Huh? 
Glad to see you kids are getting an early start. There's a lot of work to do today. Maybe for some of us. <sighs> Beautiful day for a celebration, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, sure mm -hmm. is. Hmm. Something wrong, Sarah? Why would a grown-up like you care about the bright circle? Well, there's nothing wrong with being thankful, Sarah. Me so thankful. <laughs> yeah, and I'm thankful I'm done pushing that silly tree. Hmm, I have to learn what I've learned since last cold time. <gasps> I know what I've learned it. Yes, yes, yes. I guess whatever Ducky learned is underwater. She's going awfully deep. Maybe she's trying to get underwater green food for the celebration. There's green food underwater? Yeah, but you have to hold your breath a long time to get it. Bubbles! <gasps> Yay, <laughs> me. I practiced it very much since the last Bright Circle celebration. I did, I did. That was really impressive, Ducky. Well, I bet I've learned more than all of you. I learned, um... What you learned, Sarah? Tell us. Tell Bright Circle, too. Oh, forget it. Forget what, Sarah? Forget everything. I'm so sick of hearing about the Bright Circle. Why? Do you not like the Bright Circle? I like it fine. I just don't think we need a whole celebration to thank you for being there. <laughs> What's next? Am I supposed to start thanking the trees and rocks for being here too? <gasps> well, if you want to, yes, yes, yes. Well, I don't want to. The bright circle is just a ball in the sky that's going to come and go and make warm times just like always. It doesn't need a celebration. I think everyone can make up their own minds about the Bright Circle and the celebration. Then go ahead and waste your day if you want to. But I'm not helping and I'm not celebrating. Doesn't look like you think it's so good to me. <sighs> Where are Tria and Trisha? Oh, they're off on some bright circle celebration nonsense. Really? You think it's nonsense? Because that's what I think too. Of course you do. You're a three horn, like me. Life's exactly what you see. Nothing is a mystery. A rock's a rock, a tree's a tree. It's what I call reality. Reality is so plain to see. It's right in front of me. My reality is problem free. I can see the world is flat. The sky is round, can't argue that. While we stand still here on the ground. The bright circle goes round. Reality. My reality. Is no mystery. Is just what you see. It's right in front of me. There's no mystery. My reality. It's plain to see reality. I think Spike knows what he can do. Yep, yep, yep. That good, Spike. What you do? <laughs> What 
is doing down there? Ah! Everyone will love those tree parts at the celebration. Yup, yup, yup. <laughs> Whoa, easy there, Spike! Me think Bright Circle very proud. All right, time for us all to get back to work. But, Littlefoot, have you not learned it anything? Haven't I learned anything? Of course I have. Watch this. <laughs> hey, you sound like Spike. And I'm almost as strong as him. Uh, hmm? Here, we'll have a feast of our own while everyone else is busy with that bright circle nonsense. Hi, Topsy. Hi, Sarah. Oh, are those for the celebration? Nope, they're just for us. What do you mean? You know I think this whole celebration stuff is ridiculous. Well, the rest of the Great Valley disagrees with you. Huh. Sarah doesn't. Right, Sarah? Right, Daddy. Well, Trisha and I have been having a great time. We've helped make the clearing look pretty. And Trisha found her first sweet tree part. Huh? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> are you listening to me? Hmm? What? Oh, 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 of course I was listening. You and all the others are busy thanking something that doesn't need any thanks. Well, if you change your mind, Trisha and I will be digging up sweet roots for the celebration. No thanks. I'm staying here with Dad. <laughs> Dad, do you think Tria and Trisha are silly? No, of course not. Hmm. Oh, you worry too much. There are some things that I just know. Now, eat. Oh, maybe I've learned to like the taste of bad tasting tree parts. Mm. <laughs> oh, no, I haven't learned that. No worry, Ruby. Bright circle, very patient. Dad? Oh, yes, Sarah? Remember when Tria took me and my friends to the mud pool? Yes. And at first, I didn't want to get in, but once I did, it was kind of fun. Hmm? Well, now my friends are getting ready for the celebration, and... Well, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if we helped just a little bit. Well, I suppose we could go over there just to see how everyone's been getting along without us. <laughs> Thanks, Daddy. This place is looking much cleaner. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, it's just about ready for the big celebration. Hey, is that part of the celebration, too? Uh, me not think so. What was that? A fire rock. Hurry, Sarah! Oh no! We have to put that fire out before it spreads! Littlefoot, is Bright Circle mad? No, 
Petrie, we've all seen smoking mountains before, and sometimes they cause fires. It doesn't mean that the Bright Circle is angry. It just means that until we get help, we're just going to have to fight this fire by ourselves. Spike, dig like you did earlier today. Chopper, use your legs to kick the dirt into the fire. Okay! <laughs> Tree stars work? That'll work. Oh, I sure am glad I'm faster at running than I used to run. Say, running must be what I've gotten better at. Tree stars out of the water. I will. Yes, I will. And Petrie, I need you to take these wet tree stars, fly over the fire, and drop them onto the flames. Fly over fire? You can do it. It's for the bright circle. Right. For bright circle. The fire's not out yet. Mr. Threehorn, you're here too? Of course I'm here, and I'm here to help too. Drop some tree stars over here. I can cover this whole area.
Yeah, it's all right. You know, maybe I've learned it's okay to celebrate. Hmm, <laughs> once in a while. You're right, Sarah. It isn't that bad, is it? I know you're not one for celebrations, Topsy, but I'm awfully glad you're here. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, me happy everyone here. <laughs> 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 